All right, obviously, uh, it was a good week for us last week, you know, playing, playing our rival and uh, um, going down there on Thursday and, and a nice comeback win. I thought the guys started all right. I didn't think we were bad. I didn't think we were great, but you know, kind of good getting off the bus period and then kind of built up as the game went along and, and coming back and winning a game like that there obviously gives you good, good positive emotion and that kind of carried through into Saturday and I thought we started started real well and played, played a pretty complete game and, uh, and closed her out. It was, it was tight at one nothing. Um, they had us on our, our heels a little bit and uh, got a really timely TV timeout was good. I think you guys kind of took a deep breath and then from then on I think the second uh, second half of the game we were outstanding. Third period with a three nothing lead. Uh, just didn't give up much at all and, and played real well. So I guess directionally uh, I like, like where the team's at and a lot of things that uh, We've talked about what we've worked on. I think you guys are, are getting there and, and, and showing signs of um, having a little belief and, and faith in playing a certain way. And I think our third periods have really shown that where you know, we've been outscoring teams and, and playing hard and um, you know getting some time to go. So all that's been positive, and then that, that leads us into this week and you know number three Notre Dame coming into town. They're a heck of a team and good balance and scoring and. Uh, defensively very good and obviously Kale Morris and that he's as good as anybody in the country and uh, they always present a, a tough challenge for us and again it'll be another another mile post for us and, and see how we react to that challenge and you know I certainly expect our guys to have a great week of practice and compete and uh, make, get after it make some hay here at home so yes, this is well, the first sweep of Michigan since 2009 for Michigan State. Just how big was this weekend for the program when it comes to recruiting, confidence, all that stuff? Well, you know, I, I do think there's a you know certain momentum with things, and and sometimes you know the same directionally you get things built in the right way, I and mean, you like to have some victories along the way to you know substantiate that. And certainly, I didn't know until I I think somebody sent me. That texted me the headline and said, "Hey, it's the first time in tenure." I didn't know. I mean, I, I'm looking on a two and a half year timeline here, my own uh, memory, I guess. So, um, but that's an awful long time. But that is serious. I don't know how many sweeps they've had in that long time either. So it, it, it's it's that type of battle, and that shows you how hard it is to get uh, sweeps in the Big Ten, but let alone in the home and homes with uh, with Michigan or tough. So, um, but I think hey, it helps. It uh, you know the, the recruits see that and. Uh, you know, we want to say that they were, we're in that, that class of uh, schools and, and we're going to win some games and we're going to keep winning more games and um, that puts us in there. But it certainly helps when you go in the living room and you're, you're talking to young men about, you know, where the program is going. You know, you can say what you want, but uh, sometimes the proof is in what you're doing. And I've always been a bigger believer in that, that, that you know, actions kind of speak so loud that I can't hear what you're saying. So, you know, we, we go about our business the way we do and our staff has the same vision and, um, we're going to do things the right way and, and, and work through it. And I, I think that's moving the right way, so I feel good about it on all fronts. Uh, Bernie Stephen moved to the first line. Can you take us behind that thought process? And was it more of an experiment, or is that kind of a long term that we should expect going yeah. forward? Yeah, I don't know if it's a long term. I think uh, one thing that uh, Nico Mueller played there a lot early on, and, he, and he's a heck of a hockey player. He grades out in so many different areas real well, and then he's actually still putting up points. I think he, he put a lot of pressure on himself to jump right into where Taro was, and, and if, if you notice during the game, he still probably plays half the time with him. Like after after penalty kill, uh, you know, uh, Patrick and and, uh, and and Louis are coming out, and he always jumps in because because uh, Brody kills a lot of penalties um, in the middle of shifts. Sometimes I'll switch that up and throw him in, but. The decision there was to take a little bit of pressure off of Nico and just, just let him be a freshman and play and kind of relax a little bit, which I think he has. And then on the other hand, it, it gives him a little bit of weight on that line. Um, you know, Brody's a guy that you have to you have to pre-scout and you have to be ready for him because he's coming hard um, and he's coming fast. So I think it backs teams off and it doesn't let him just match up against Patrick's line with just guys that skate real well and get over the top that you're, you're definitely going to get some forechecking. checking when Louis gets going, um, I always tell him that he, he's our best forechecker when he's playing the right way. So that, that gives that line a little bit different element. So I kind of like that. And, uh, and Brody's good enough to make plays, and he's, he's good enough to score some goals, and, and uh, uh, he's great to give him a little bit of room. Dan, those that know, that know you as a friend on a personal basis know your drive. But in reality, with the rebuild, 
If I'd have told you beginning of the year you'd be sitting here five and five with the schedule you had, wouldn't it, isn't there some pleasure in the fact looking at that how brutal that schedule is? Yeah, you know, it is. Sometimes when you look back, but you know, we're, we're greedy as coaches. You look at it and go, man, man, pounds here. You know, I, I would have liked to have made a Cornell series is the one that you know that, that's a really good hockey team, and I I would have liked to have you know have loved to have gotten two, but to to get a win out of that. Um, be on the plus side of it but no you know you have to look at it you know in totality and, and I think you're right you look at it and say we, we you know, we've been on the road a lot we played you know this will be our third you know top 10 team coming up um, we, we battled pretty hard and, and I think it's made us grow a little quicker so you know you, you take the one side <coughs> you're playing a lot of competition just you know coach Izzo is you know famous for doing this and it's 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 a good way to do it sometimes it doesn't look as pretty we could have had a softer schedule and you know maybe had two or three more wins, but we probably wouldn't in, in the RPI or the pairwise wouldn't be as high as rated as we are. So I think our strength of schedule is fifth right now, and I don't think that's going anywhere. The teams we played are going to continue to win games, so I, I think it's beneficial. And again, I think, I think we say a lot: happy, not satisfied. But but you're right. You look at all that and you throw it all in there. You'd love to be ten and zero, but not a bad spot to be in, and keep building from here. Coach, uh, last week you talked about getting over the hump and like certain cultural aspects of the team. Uh, you mentioned how it's been a real player-led team where you don't even have to organize as much. Can you just elaborate a little more on that and how that might help translate to more success on the ice? Well, you know, you know, hockey is one of those games where, you know, when they get out there, there's a lot of flow, there's a lot of changes. I mean, you know, you're coaching, you're putting lines out there, you're making adjustments at different times, but, and, you know, they have to make the adjustments out there. So, it, you know, it's like basketball in that sense where, you know, there's there's things that happen real quick, and they have to read, and, and they have to be used to doing that. And you know, it's like raising kids. If you never give them the chance to make a decision, and then they send them off to college, and they make bad decisions, that's your fault. So, um, you know, that's that's a trust thing. That's an ownership situation. It's a cultural thing, and um, you do want them in charge, but you know, you have to establish that, and, and you have to say hey, this is the way we do things, and you have to have certain standards, and that takes a while to, to kind of get there. Um, but I think we, we've got to that point, and, and then the, the review of that is how the guys handle it. And then, like I said, that's just a matter of, you know, we can't go on the ice with them in the summer. There's ice time available, captains organizing skates and being smart enough not to say, well, we have, you know, ice time at 10 in the morning, you know, Monday through Saturday. You know, whoever wants to come, you get three or four guys every day and nothing's there. Where, as opposed to saying, hey, here's open ice on these days, but, you know, these two days, you know, we're coming and, Let's have enough guys that we can have a good, good scrimmage and, and get some hockey. And just things like that that, that get ahead of it and, and, and then put you in a position, like I said, later on when, you know, when you're coaching and you put them out there, you know, like Vince Lombardi said, hey, once the, once the game starts, you know, he'd say he's the most, you know, the most useless guy on the sidelines. You know, I don't think that's probably completely accurate, but again, directionally, that, that is true. They have to be able to make those decisions and lead themselves. And they'll believe that a lot quicker and a lot better when, when that's them doing it. So, um, I, I enjoy that, and but you know the the culture. It's not like oh, okay, we achieved that, and now let's move on to the other thing. That's that's every day. You know, that's that's how we live our lives. That's how coaches show up to the rink. Um, and if you see it strain even just a bit, then that's when we got to jump in. And then even better if it strays a little bit, and the older guys step in and, and correct the ship. So but you got to be hey, you got to be vigilant with that because you can get away from you just just as quickly as, as you established it. And um, I think it's one of the, the more fun things that you can do as a coach is, is, is to build that. And then when you hear a guy do an interview and, and he says maybe the same dumb things I say about how, how the game's supposed to be played and, and what they're supposed to do, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's sinking in. And, and that's the teaching side of it. And I, I really like that part. And over the last two weekends, you've played teams that uh, attack, play with pace, and transition. And now with Notre Dame, a team known for defense, even though they're scoring a little more. What challenges does that bring for your team if they are racing to the defense? Yeah, the, we, we, were, we met this morning and we were, we were going through some film with the coaches. And, and Notre Dame's interesting in that sense because you're right, they do, they're very good defensively, but they're, they're very, very good transitionally. I mean, they get a chance and, and boom, they're going to go at you fast. So they're, they're patient with how they play, but when they go, uh, they strike and they've got enough talent to make you pay for that. And so it, it's a. Again, you go into games, it's, it's mentally how do you approach this. And we were looking at how we did some things last year, how you attack them through the neutral zone, and is, is that how we want to do it this year? And, and so, you know, they, they present a, a different challenge. But mentally, 
you know, Penn State's going to just, they're just going to test you every time up and down the ice. Um, Notre Dame will be a little different. But if you fall asleep either on either of them, they'll, they'll make you pay. So, yeah, they're, it's fun. They're, they're just different styles, and, and you have to be, you know, able to adapt and adjust. And, that's, again, that's another fun part of it is getting your guys ready. Hopefully they can, they can do that for 60 minutes because Notre Dame will. They're going to play the way they're going to play for 60 minutes. Um. The, when you say strength of schedule, how you're fifth right now, it's fifth toughest schedule in the country. Is that what you're right. indicating or yeah. referencing? Yes. Okay. And then um, I think you know a couple of weeks ago you mentioned how Lethman and Ritter going back and forth. One of them really needed to maybe have a performance or prove themselves in a way for you to maybe solidify one over the other. How much maybe did you feel John did that this past weekend? And where is his? Where did, what did you like from him in that series as well? Oh. Well, yeah, I think John's John's made a good step, I and mean, he's playing like a senior, and his, his numbers bear that out. And we're five and two when, when John starts, and um, you know he's kind of taking a little bit of control. Um, you know and that 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 puts the onus on Drew though to, to make sure he's, he stays ready, and he competes in practice. And again, that's that's probably his best attribute as a as a young man. So he'll continue to do that. But no, John's. Hey, he stop pucks. He's made timely saves. You know, we got down three one against Michigan. He shuts the door and, and made some big saves to keep it there. And then obviously the shutout the next night. He was outstanding at Penn State. We, we can't really ask a, a heck of a lot more out of him. And that's you know what we were, we were hoping to have that situation where somebody played so well we had to keep playing. I, I was hoping that both goalies would finish the season and have a thousand save percentage from here till the end, and we'd split every night. Everybody'd be happy, but. Um, but no, John's done a great job, and, and Drew has to buy his time, and, and that's that's just the nature of the business, and uh, um, they both handled it real well. And he like said John's playing great, and that's that's good for him and great for us. So, Coach Kodarenko was kind of stealing the show the past couple weeks with his play. Um, how your third and fourth lines kind of stepped up and tightened the screws a little bit to take some of that pressure off him? Yeah, see, you know, and I guess proof is in the pudding. Sometimes it was it was nice on Saturday night. Um, I think. Uh, Patrick's line about 17 and a half, 18 minutes, and if, if we keep them under 20, that means the other guys are, are doing a nice job, and the matchups are are working out all right for us. So if they can, you know, if if, if you want to say our fourth line, if they can get into that eight to 12 minute stratosphere, that's that's outstanding for us, just from an energy standpoint, from a matchup standpoint, um, and then especially with the back to back games most weekends, uh, gets you through that second game. So no, they've done a nice job, and you know they chipped in with some goals and. Um, you know, if they can be more than just clock killers, we want them to, to be physical, we want them to forecheck, we want to make the other team, you know, tire them out, spend some time uh, in, in their own zone. Uh, if they can do those things and some good things happen, like, you know, Austin scoring a goal, uh, then it's even better. And, and Saturday night was a good case that when Tommy Apap scored, Austin uh, scored, and, uh, you know, those are big things for us. And that's, hey, when, if we get goals from those two guys, we should win that. That's, that's the way we look at it. And I thought Patrick played, actually I thought he played very well on Saturday. And, you know, for the first time in a few weeks, he didn't get any points. Uh, but he did a lot of things in, in the hard areas of the ice. And, um, you know, for him to move on and play in the NHL, he's going he's to have to do those things and be really good at them. So that's probably the way he played on Saturday. Dean, how big of an impact is dirt being moved and the building starting to go up in recruiting? How big is that playing right now? It's, you know what, the... Uh, it's nice to, to tell anybody we're recruiting, or, you know, to tell them that hey, it's, you know, we can show you this side of the arena, but you know, you're gonna, you know, guys from this point on aren't gonna be on this side of the arena, and you know what what we're adding on there um, is, is is an outstanding thing. It's, it, it should be exciting for new for young men to come, and I think it. You know, you hate to say it, you hate to say that you know it's it, it's not superficial or. About, about the facilities and all that, but hey, we, you know, let's, let's be honest, that's the day and age we're in, and um, kids do want to see those things, and they, they want to train like an NHL player, and they want to train, uh, trying to become an NHL player, so just adding the shooting room, and, and having that nice, that nice video room, and, and the hydro area that, that Dave Carrier uh, I have put in, and, you know, those those are uh, outstanding areas, the weight room, and, um, you know, the, I look at them as teaching points, and just, it allows us to teach better, and develop, uh, uh, young men even better, so yeah, it's it's got us in the conversation with, uh, with with some young men, and I think it's 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 won the conversation with some others. So it, it's it had a huge impact already with, with being about half done. Dan, you've killed off 13 of the last 14 points power plays. What's been the difference in the improvement of the PK? 
Uh, you know, I, I think uh, PK is a little, you know, you're one guy short and it's a little bit like ballet dancing or ballroom dancing maybe where everybody has to be moving the same way and if not, then mistakes are really easy to see. And we, we were probably had, I'll say five penalty killers because you have your goalie out there as well. We, we'd all, it seemed like we'd have four guys moving and, and one guy a little off and then as soon as you know the puck ended up in that area, we kind of paid for it. And then the other part, and that's, that's been better. I think we've just been reading off each other and, and uh, Drew Miller always used to say, he used to call them like little cheats on the ice and you know, reading the right way and you have to do that when you're playing a guy short. And the other part is I think our, our four checks been a lot better and, and we've got some stops so that teams haven't been in our own zone for two minutes and it's, it's hard to kill that long or even you know one clear. We can get in two and three clears. I think if you look at it, if you get three clears on a penalty kill, you don't get scored on very often. So if we get a stop, uh, we get a good scrum in the corner and, and we work out of a, a choke situation and get the puck 200 feet a couple times, um, that kills a lot of it. And then we've done a much better job of that. We, we had the opportunities. We didn't finish the deal earlier in the year and, and, it, and it cost us. It seemed like every time we get to a minute and 50 seconds, they'd score you know, two or three seconds to go in the penalty and, and, uh, and that's, that's a little uh, demoralizing. But, They've completed it better and uh, and done a nice job with it, and you know, hopefully that continues to move.